Thank you for visiting ETCanada.com. I'm Cheryl Hickey. Now enjoy the following uncut interview. Well, let's talk about the record and uh, let's talk about you deciding to be a little, little more vulnerable to all of us this time around. What inspired that? Um, for Goodbye Lullaby, um, well, this is my fourth album. I didn't want to keep making the same record over and over again. I've always kind of done the aggressive pop rock, mm -hmm. kind of playful songs. And um, with this album, I kind of went a little deeper, a little more vulnerable. I've always written all my music. I've always co-written. But this album, I wrote half of it all by myself. I even used some songs that I wrote when I was younger. One of the songs on there mm -hmm. titled Darlin' I wrote when I was like 14 or 15 in Napanee in my parents' oh, wow. family room. And um, I produced two songs on this album, so I, you know, I grew as far as that goes. And, um, you challenged yourself. Exactly. And, um, you know, I didn't really follow the trend as, as far as like radio and stuff mm -hmm. goes. Um, it's very rhythmic and it's very like pop and dance right now. And, um, you know, so I kind of had some conflicts with the record company, but Aww. I needed to make this album for me, and this is something as an artist that I needed to do, and, you know, I've been doing this for 10 years now, so it's yeah. important to always be true to yourself because you, you need to be happy with your of life. Of course, you want, and you gotta, you're the one who has to get up on that stage in, like, 20 minutes or so, <laughs> yeah. and you have to love what you're doing. Yeah, so I made a record that was just a little more stripped down, mm -hmm. a little more raw and emotional, and just, like, more song-driven, and that's, like, how songs are in their, you know, when I'm writing music, I'm writing either just on a piano or just mm -hmm. on an acoustic guitar. And, um, you know, when you have a whole bunch of tracks in a production, it kind of buries the tone of a vocal and the character and stuff. And, and I'm all about that kind of music, but I wanted to just really showcase the vocal and, and, and the emotional part of the performance and that's what this record was for me. It's for you. Do you think that when you were 17 or even pre that, I know you were writing songs before that, but when we sort of were first introduced to you, you weren't in a way mature enough to allow people into that side of you? Do you think, think you've reached a place where you're just more comfortable the to let that side out? I've always had these types of songs like ballads and more stripped down songs on all of my other records, but the majority of the body of songs on this album is is that tone. Mm -hmm. So on my first album, there's I'm With You. Mm -hmm. And then there's other songs like Tomorrow and Naked. And then on other all my other albums, there are, I, I've always gone there, but this is the album where I really went there. Yeah. And I read that there were, uh, some of your girlfriends actually had to talk you into throwing some songs in there, songs that make everybody around you cry, yeah, including you. This is the first record where when I played my friends the songs um, that a I had the same reaction from just a lot of females around me who heard mm. the record for the first time. They all, a lot of them cried. Aww. And I, I've never had that before with any of my other records and I thought that was really cool. I thought it was a good thing. Um, I was mm -hmm. very sincere, I was very real. And I went to those vulnerable places and I allowed myself to go there and put that on, on in some of the songs and I think people felt that. And um, when something's that real, you know, and there are those moments and people, when some people can connect, um, I think that's, that's really cool. That's what you, that's what you want that's with your audience, want, of yeah. course. When you look back at, you know, that 17 year old gal up there, you know, <laughs> tomboy. Do you kind of look and go, who is that? Or do you feel really connected to that younger version that we were first introduced to? I know that person very well. That person's <laughs> me, and that person was me 10 years ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've done the natural thing. I've grown. I, n nothing's calculated. It's all very natural. How I've grown up, it's just me, and that's just, you know. Um, I just know that when I, mm -hmm. you know, like we're talking Doc Martens, when I look at myself at 17, I had a spiral perm and, you know, like some bad style, and, and, I, and I, there's moments where I go, I don't even really remember that girl. Yeah, definitely my sense of style has changed. Um, I was very tomboyish, very baggy clothes, and, mm -hmm. and now I'll wear, like, skinny jeans and heels and yep. dresses every now and then, but... It's still the same vibe, it's just an older me. For sure. You are, and if, if I may say this, you're much more talkative with people like me, with the media. When I spoke with you six yeah, years ago, you, um, were, you were quite shy. And I still am shy. <laughs> I'm, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm introverted, and I'm 
you know, I'm, I'm a pretty quiet person in general, mm. and um, and I am shy. And uh, I think when I was younger, when it, when I had to do interviews and stuff like that, it was a challenge for me because I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I had a, I was all of a sudden surrounded by adults and trying to speak their language wasn't right. the easiest thing to do. No, I can't imagine it would be. But um, <laughs> yeah, of course I'm I'm. I enjoy interviews now and I understand what they're for. It's my way of like connecting with the fans and also like talking and people can get, I understand when you're that young, it's mm -hmm. kind of like, why is this person asking me this? Yeah. I don't want to talk I about it. Or sometimes yeah. you know how it is in the industry, people are, you know, I felt judged sometimes during interviews because sometimes people are out to get you. Of course. I'm not out to get you. I know you're not. You're Canadian. <laughs> you're a good girl. I'm a good one. <laughs> That's why we're having <laughs> That's why I'm allowed here. Yes. <laughs> um, now, I did also hear that you have a very special fun friend with you on the tour. Your mom. I do? Your mom. Oh! Your mom. Your yes. mom is backing you up my on this tour. My mom is here, and my other friend is this guy who's fake. <laughs> I just want to point is that out. I'm glad that this is fake. Oh, no, of course it is. I wouldn't, you know. <laughs> This is, I, bought, I bought this today, I'm in Canada, and I forgot to pack a winter coat, so <laughs> I, I bought this like scarf fox Little guy, fox. I, need, I need to, a faux fox, I need to name him. You do. And I, had, I haven't picked a name yet, but um, he's keeping me warm so, right now So <laughs> your faux fox keeps you warm, and what yes. does your mom give to you when you're on the road with her? My mom gives me cuddles as well. Oh. <laughs> um, my mom and I are, um, you know, we're, mom's on the tour bus with me. That's so and, awesome. And um, she joined the tour a couple days ago in Victoria, and she's out with me for a couple weeks. Wow. So I was planning on corrupting her. And, nice, um, as you yeah. do. She's showing her a good time. Is she corruptible? I think so. <laughs> well, I mean, she's newly single, so hey. Oh, two single girls oh. on the table. Well, kind of single girls on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Good fun. Well, I would I would offer to show you around Vancouver, but I think you probably have a concert to do at some point. You're yeah, it's pretty busy. amazing here. You know, I lived here for probably six months when I was 17, like before my record came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a beautiful city. So you feel somewhat at home here. Yeah, I know the city pretty well, and every time I come back, I'm pretty excited. Mm -hmm. Well, the fans love you. You know that. Well, I've been to I one love of your them. shows. <laughs> you, you got to love your fans. Um, I have to ask you, um, because I think a part of the discussion we had earlier about maturity, I think um, you've handled yourself very well in the public eye. Um, it's been, you know, there's been a lot of talk. You've gone through a lot in the last few years. Um, why is it important to you um, to have a very positive working relationship with your ex-husband and one that you can actually be open about? Um, so you're, um, it, you know <laughs> I mean? Because, I mean, I know that you've, you've collaborated, you've shot music videos, and well, I mean, you're still, it's, it's, it's you just, have a working it's relationship. It's natural, we are family. He's somebody I care very much about. He cares about me, and um, I think we're family first, and we're friends, and then, you know, if we feel like it, we work together. That's really cool. Not a lot of people can do that. I mean, and then yeah. also have the added element of cameras being potentially involved, right? Or paparazzi and that kind of jazz as well. Yeah. You had a really fun interview with one of our other reporters, Matt Babel, last week. A couple days ago, yeah. A couple days ago. And uh, I know in jest you said, I gotta find myself a new husband. <laughs> I know you were joking. But is that something that you would potentially like to do again? I mean, obviously, I'm 27, so definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you. <laughs> done. <laughs> Good for you. I'm done. I'm there. It's uh, it's a happy place to be for sure. Yeah, definitely. Well, break a leg up there, girl. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank you.